Well, welcome back. Today I want to do a quick video on uh, a little bit of a nuisance insect we got going. And we've got some yellow jackets here. This first thing this morning, 6 a.m., still dark outside. Autumn says to me, hey, there's bees swarming all over the back window here. And uh, I think what it was is because in the bathroom the light was on and the bees were attracted, but they were swarming all over here. I was kind of concerned, thinking, okay, why at... Uh, 6 a.m. and 55 degrees out are these bees swarming. Once it got light out, I headed out into the workshop here and I was trying to figure out where I could see any bees flying around once it was light. This corner, right over here. They were flying in and out. They were all over the, the bottom side of the siding. They were all over the windows, just all over the side of the house. So. Apparently, I've got a little bit of a bee problem that are going into the uh, back side of the chimney of the fireplace. And I need to get that taken care of because I imagine they will find their way into that cavity and then find their way into the house. And I've had that issue in the past where uh, they had built a nest in the side of the house somewhere where they found their way in and then chewed their way in through and eventually made it into the house. So... What I want to do is uh, what I've did a little research this morning on, and you can get a tote, a plastic tote, put a board over it, smear some cat food on the bottom of it, and I'm going to go ahead and get this thing set up and put it out here to attract the bees, and you fill it with water and put some Dawn dish soap on it. Don't have any idea how well it works, but uh, I'm going to give it a try. And the other thing is, is I've got a guy that uh, I always use to do... Uh, bee extermination around the house here every spring they spray but uh, it's amazing how after the three month guarantee it's usually about one or two days after the guarantee of spraying that uh, these bees show back up so we're going to go ahead and get a, a tote put out here on the back side of the gazebo and see what we can capture as far as uh, bees all right I just got back from our local dollar general and I picked up two of these totes so we're gonna go ahead and make a couple boards that go across the top from here to here. And I think we're gonna go ahead and set two of these out there. See if we can't uh, start attracting some bees. And from what I understand is when you put the board across there, the bees will land on the board, climb under to get the cat food. And I stopped and I picked up some uh, paste style cat food and they say that they like chicken or whatever, but the bees are after the meat. So this, Smelly cat food will attract those bees. You smear it to the underside of the board. The bees will come on it and they'll crawl under. And when they get that chunk of food, they try to fly off. They fly off and they drop a little bit. They hit the water. The water has to have some Dawn dish soap in it or some kind of dish soap. But uh, And what that does is it makes it so they don't float on the water. Then it just traps them in the water and drowns them right there. So... Uh, no, these are not honey bees. I am 100% positive of that. So I'm not worried about the honey bees. The honey bees, from what I've been told, are not attracted to cat foods and things like that. Just these uh, yellow jackets. All right, back over here in the workshop. Got my boards. All I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them across here like this. And then I'm going to attach these to the underside. Just so those boards don't slide off of there. I guess I'm just looking for as big a gap as I can so the bees can fly down, come under here, get to the cat food, and then uh, drop off as they go to fly away into the uh, water. Well, that took all of about a couple minutes. Now what I need to do is smear the cat food on the bottom side of both of these and then you flip them back over, fill it with water. I think that what I would like to do is put something here. I'm not sure yet what. I might have some mesh wire or something. I might staple to that. So when I smear the cat food in there, as it dries out or whatever over time, it won't just flop off into the waters. Okay, I found a little piece of screen over in the shed there. That'll be what kind of helps hold the cat food in when I smear it on there. Apparently the smell of the cat food and as it ferments and rots and whatever, it attracts the bees and those bees are after the meat. 
Cat food will get uh, trapped up under there and it won't fall off and all that. I have not seen this done or even if it's needed, but uh, common sense tells me that uh, cat food is not glue, but uh, when you smear it on there, it'll stick for a little while. And I'm assuming that once it dries up, being outside in the air, it will fall off. So this is uh, my idea or my thoughts on how to keep that cat food from falling out from there and the bees will still be able to get in there and get to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and staple these on and uh, smear the cat food on, fill it with water and a little bit of Dawn dish soap. And then we're gonna be taking it out back there and uh, setting it up. All right, got them all stapled on there, as you can see. And there is a little bit of a gap under there. So that cat food will smear up underneath the wires, and those wires, what I'm helping, will hold that on. I'm actually thinking that screen is going to be a good idea because uh, it's literally smeared it down in through the screen and uh, it's holding it in there rather well. This is a lot different looking. This is uh, kind of nasty. These are, uh, there's bigger chunks of chicken in this, and they're a lot harder to smear into the screen. My whole garage is going to stink like cat food now. Go ahead and fill up the totes. I think I probably should have put the soap in afterwards, but uh, we'll try the other one the other way, where I fill it with water first, then put the soap in. I guess the whole purpose of this is the, the Dawn is what uh, takes the oil off the wings, and it also breaks the static tension of the water. So when they get on that water, they can't uh, climb off of it because of the oil, and uh, they can't fly away. Then they don't. They won't float on it. All right, I got those both set on there, and I can see already that some of that chunky. Um, Cat food is falling off of there. It's falling into water. Not really worried about it. I guess now we just sit and wait and those buggers over there are just everywhere. When the uh, exterminator gets here, we will uh, try and get some video of him spraying them out. So let's see if uh, these totes do anything in the time frame that it takes to uh, kill them off from the exterminator as well. I got stung already twice this summer, one by a regular wasp and then once by one of these yellow jackets. And the wasp just hurt like crazy. But the yellow jacket, not only did it hurt, but it swelled up. Uh, I'll bet I had a half inch swollen on my leg where it got me and uh, turned red for about a week. So I don't like messing with bees. They're just not much fun. So let's see what uh, these water traps can do as well as the exterminator. All right, so I've got uh, Brian Unick here from Maximum Exterminating, and he's the fellow I use all the time, uh, usually every spring. And I know springtime's pretty busy time for you, correct, Brian? It is. You do all uh, years, except for the winter time, of course. Yeah, and you probably, if you were had to estimate, how many houses do you spray in a in a year? About fifteen hundred houses. About fifteen hundred houses. So you're out spraying for bees, spiders, bugs, basic insects, ants, preventative. Preventative. All right. So he's got his uh, gas-powered Honda sprayers, and he's got his uh, special mixture in there that he mixes up. Um, I'm not going to ask you what's in them, but uh, I know that they kill bees pretty good. They kill wasps instantly, from what I've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, you say with the yellow jackets, it might take a day or two. It does. Yeah. Chemical does all the work. They track it in, okay. and they end up dead. All right. Now, we talked about the larvae that are inside the nest. Will they track that in and kill the larvae as well? The larvae will die, but they will come out. They'll, they'll survive initially. Okay. Uh, they'll come out, and then they'll end up dead after they get into the, the poison that I spray. So that mixture that you mix up not only kills the spiders, bugs, and bees, it also deters them for, from wanting to come back as well? It does. Okay. All yeah. right. So, Brian's been doing this for how many years now? That's 22 this year. 22 years, and this is your own company that you've started, and mm -hmm. small businessman, and you're you're making it by uh, killing insects. I am. Yeah. All right. That's well, something I enjoy. Yep. Well, we're going to head on back and show Brian where we're at, and uh, we're going to suit him up with a microphone or whatever he uses. I don't know. Do you cover your face with uh, anything? You just... Just, just my got, mask. Got your mask yeah. on. Okay. 
Well, he's braver than I am, so let's head back and watch him spray these up. It's like showing the Ghostbusters where to go. So Brian, I wanted to show you this real quick. This is what uh, seemed like it was one of the most popular things on the internet for trapping and catching bees, but they've been sitting out here for about three hours now and haven't caught a single one. So you think you can do any better than those? I might be able to. You see them going in there in the corner there. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna get out of here and stand back behind the door while he sprays this whole area up back here. It's a pretty active nest. This time of year they are. deterrent chemical. You're not even going to know it's there after a little bit. It's like spraying water, but for them anyway. What we want to do is make sure they're going to be getting in with the chemical. Make sure they're acting right. Okay, there goes one right now. Just took the chemical in. You probably wouldn't be able to save them right now if you wanted to. Like I said, they'll be acting normal here in about 30 minutes and then they'll all be dead within a couple days. Except for the larvae, which we talked about earlier. All right, we're tracking it in just right. We're good here. Well, what do you think? Did you ghost bust them out there or what? What do you think? You got them or? Uh... Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Now they'll swarm like that for a little while and take that uh, medicine back into their home and <laughs> get the rest of them, huh? They will. Good. And it's surprisingly quick. I don't know how many bees are in there. I'm guessing a few hundred. Yeah. I'll be dead. Most likely by tomorrow. There might be still a, a few stragglers tomorrow. Well, I guess that's uh, that's all reasoning for calling you. Because I knew that if I had to wait and wait and wait for them to go into them water buckets, that uh, <laughs> I might start seeing them inside. And that's... Yeah, the cooler it gets, the more they want to go inside. That's water. That's water? Yeah, I like to mix things fresh. Okay. So you'll mix that with whatever powder and chemical agents and things like that. Mm -hmm. and yeah. You were down at my father-in-law's here a couple of weeks ago and you took a bald, hor bald face hornet's nest down. Mm -hmm. Do you suit up with a whole bee face and everything for oh, them? Yeah. Yeah. I think they tried to attack me as soon as I walked up to them. Oh, did they? They were pretty mean. Do you uh, get stung a lot? Typically I don't. I got stung five times this year, but I can go years without getting stung. Yeah. It's just, you know. And you're, you're within the proximity of the bees. It's just a matter of time. Right. And uh, what's your thoughts on this year? Maybe it's just me because I've been more aware of them around here, but it just seems like there are bees everywhere, and they're mostly the yellow jackets. Do you, do you see an increase this year? Or? Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. and any idea why? We had such a mild winter last year, and I think that might have had something to do with it. Yeah. This is the worst year I've seen. So like they, said, a lot of them had survived through the winter. And just multiplied then, or? They all start with the queen, except for honeybees. The honeybees are gonna go year to year because they make their own food. Okay. Uh, yellow jackets, they're gonna die off. The queens are gonna survive the winter. They're gonna start brand new again in the spring. So, That's why you never see big nests in the spring. It's always the fall. Okay, so the key is to always try and get the queen to, to, get, to kill her off. Mm -hmm. and, and multiple queens inside the nest for the oh, following really? year. Okay, and we'll also take a look at the uh, totes of water there and see if that works. Have you ever seen anything like that? Have you ever? I see all kinds of things. Yeah. yeah I've seen stuff like that. All kinds of funky traps. Not that traps. elaborate, but that was, that's, you know, stuff like that, sure. Yeah. Well, the good thing is, is having you come out, it's instantaneous. I can now go back out there and not worry about getting stung in the next couple of days. And like I said earlier, I've been stung twice this year and the wasp didn't bother me. It just hurt real bad. Mm -hmm. But the yellow jacket, I swelled up and and it hurt for days and days and days. You're apparently not allergic to them. No, I swell up as well. Yeah. But not allergic enough. You, to do you scream me. like a little girl like I did when I got one? I got it. Well, I'm, yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> I get mad, but uh, you no know, screaming, but yeah, yeah, I react. Yeah, I was out here in the driveway this summer and I had the car pulled out with the windows down mm -hmm. and a couple of them flew in the car. There was like five or six of them that flew into the car and it just seemed, I was like, why are they attacking me and why are they coming after me? So I jumped out and uh, waited for the bee to leave the car and they, they wouldn't go out. So I got the leaf blower and I started trying to blow them out of the car. And next thing you know, I'm standing there and I got a pair of shorts on and one curled up my pant leg of my shorts and stung me in the thigh. Mm. 
and I didn't know where it was. So now I'm standing here in my underwear in the middle of the driveway, jumping around, bouncing around. You know, if anybody would have pulled in, they would have sure got a good kick out of that. Uh -huh. But uh, so I guess what you do, Brian, is uh, you make people a lot more comfortable around their house. Then mm, peace of mind. Sure. You need to get a hold of Brian. He's uh, he's in Northwest Crawford County, and where else do you go? Anywhere further? Erie and Crawford County. Erie and Crawford County. County? Mm -hmm. So if uh, if you need a good exterminator, we've used him for. I'll bet 10 or 15 years now. At we least. used him down at the, our business and everything else. And he's always always managed to keep uh, keep the bees and insects and everything at bay. So I'll put a, uh, a link in the description here, Brian, with your name and number and all that on there. So hopefully somebody will watch us and give you a call. Always a pleasure. Thank all you. right. It's been about two hours since the uh, Brian the exterminator has come in and sprayed. And you can see those bees are still flying in and out of the nest out back there. But uh, what they're doing is they're dragging in that chemical that he sprayed back to the hive, wherever it's at up in there. And uh, hopefully sooner or later, he says by tomorrow, most of them should be dead. So I'm hoping that when I come out, I'll see a bunch of dead bees down here. All right, I'm back out here a little less than 24 hours later. And... I don't see a single bee coming out of that hole. And yes, I will have to patch that up and fix it here another day or two just so bees don't get in there. But I don't have any more bees coming in and out of there. And like I said, less than 24 hours later, I do have some dead ones here. And you can see this one's not faring real well right now. There's a couple more around here on the sidewalk. And I'm not going to go around and show you all of them. But let's assess the uh, water in the buckets here real quick. And I don't have a single bee in this water anywhere. But I can't say it was a complete bust or complete fail because I do have two dead ones in this bucket. I don't believe there's any more in there anywhere. So do these work? Yes, it attracted two bees. They got into the water and couldn't get out. But in the same time, I also sprayed this. So those bees probably weren't extremely interested in finding this, but for the last uh, 20 hours or so, they were still active and they still were flying around. I would actually like to try this test at the start of the summertime and put it out on the porch and see how that works. So I'm gonna save these totes and the rails and the wood that I made to do that test later on in the the spring to summertime. But I do think my problems have been resolved thanks to Brian over at Maximum Exterminating and I will leave his number in the description down below. So check that out if you're in the uh, in the area. He can probably, well, I'm pretty sure he can absolutely help you out with any kind of bee or uh, spiders or anything like that. And remember, this is the time of year that these things are starting to want to try to get back into your house through any small little cracks in the foundation or anything like that. So it is it is worthwhile having them if you don't like dealing with the uh, spiders and bees and everything that uh, try to infiltrate your house. So I guess uh, with that being said, we will at some point in time get back to how well these things work at a better time of the year and uh, see if we can't actually attract some bees with those things and if they uh, do make sense to use or if it makes sense to call a professional and have uh, have bees taken care of that way. Now, to my knowledge, I don't know if these would work for wasps or uh, bald-faced hornets or anything like that, because I don't know what attractants uh, would bring them in. But I do know that, uh, you know, a cat food source or a rotten chicken or something like that up under those boards is an attractant for the yellow jackets and should attract them and cause them to uh, drown in the buckets of water. So we'll get these picked up, put away for the winter. And uh, if you felt that this video was informative at all, or uh, you might have an interest in figuring out a little more on getting rid of a bee problem, why give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see a little bit more later on something like these and some of the other odd things I do around the property here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks.